You're on 702 ABC Sydney with James Valentine this afternoon. Is there a connection between elite athletes and the use of illicit drugs? Perhaps even if you just think about it, you know, on the surface of it, the the kind of person who wants to push themselves to get that adrenaline rush and to, and to achieve at an absolute high level may well have a similar mentality to someone who seeks the, the same kind of thing through drug and alcohol addic- addiction. How widespread is it in throughout uh, prof- professional sport and uh, what do we know about the whole thing? Psychologist Cameron Brown is uh, addressing a conference at the Swinburne University Sport and Recreation Conference and is uh, dealing with some of these things. On He's delivering a paper called, or has delivered a paper called Illicit Drugs in Sport, The Silent Epidemic, and Cameron joins us this afternoon to uh, to illuminate some of these areas. Cameron Brown, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's, uh, I suppose, you know, it, it, it's come right into the forefront. I mean, we, uh, we, with the Lance Armstrong uh, story, are you, are you talking about the use of performance-enhancing drugs or the use of other, recre- what we no. usually term recreational drugs? Yeah, we're, so we're talking more about um, recreational drugs, um, including alcohol as well. Lance is a bit of a different story in that he used, um, he used the drugs for performance enhancement, um, obviously, rather than in terms of addiction. Yep. So, and how widespread is the use of, of alcohol and illicit drugs in, uh, in that level of sport, do you think? Um, it's an exceptionally hard question to answer, obviously, um, due, to, due to the um, illegality of, of using illicit drugs. Um, and also the fact that it's, it's um, frowned upon um, in competitive sport. Uh, studies recently done um, indicate that maybe 7% um, of elite athletes who were studied in that study um, may use illicit drugs, um, but it's a, it's a very hard thing to tell. Um, we know that around um, 1 in 20 Australians suffers from a substance use disorder, so we could be looking at that number as well with, with athletes. Because mm. it, it's sort of... I mean, maybe it feels a little counterintuitive, but I think that the the very fittest of us would then go and use use drugs in some way. But in another sense, the very fittest of us may well be quite capable of it. You know what I mean? They'll recover. They'll it'll it'll feel like part of their life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, like you did say, that that seeking out the um, the adrenaline, um, that seeking out the, the what we call the using the reward system in the brain. Um, that it may be um, it's competitive sport may be a way of, of masking that um, faulty reward system. Elite athletes may definitely be using it, um, using drugs and alcohol after um, they've finished their competitive career or during their competitive career to, I suppose, boost their boost those levels of um, excitement and reward back up in their brains. Mm. I suppose it's also you know the other factor that may come into this is you've you've had a, particularly after. Your career, your career, you know, your career is over at twenty-five, at twenty-seven. Um, there, yeah, there, yeah. There, there can be a great emptiness there, can't there? Yeah, absolutely. And, and between um, you know the ages of twenty and twenty-five, um, we, our brains don't stop developing. Um, so we're we're looking at young young men, especially who are um, completing their their what we're calling their professional careers by the age of twenty-five, when they've just really matured as a person. Mm. Uh, and there, there is that potential that there's. Um, problems with social skills, there's problems with the ability to, ability to um, manage themselves financially and also we're removing um, the big safety net that they've got, things like sponsorship and financial deals that they may have and so there, there is that um, tendency that they may turn to drugs and alcohol as a way to adapt to, to life after sport. They may also feel, I wonder if, if, if in many, particularly again if we're talking about afterwards, there's a sense of, look, it's, you know, the, the, the shackles are off now. You know, I've spent eight years at an elite level training and being disciplined and every single moment's been, been attended to and every single, you know, substance I've ever taken has been attended to. You know, thank God I can relax a bit and kick back and have a drink. Yeah, yeah, that, absolutely, that could be the case. And, um, and, and for the majority, the vast majority of um, sports people finishing their career, that's not a problem. Um, but those who may be predisposed to, to addiction or, or alcohol or drug problems, um, that tends to be the, the beginning of the spiral. Um, they tend to, to start with a little bit of, of use um, and then we see a downward spiral from there. Mm. So you're suspecting that there, are you suspect me or do you feel like you know that there's a disproportionate amount of high level athletes who have alcohol and drug problems? I would suspect that there's more than we know about, um, obviously, um, because statistically speaking, on a on a um, census level, there's there's a greater percentage um, than what's reported in elite athletes at this stage. So, um, whether it's due to 
you know, some some demographic variables obviously um, change that a little bit. The one being you know, fitness and things like that. But we do we do suspect that there are more um, than what than what we're seeing out there. What have you seen in terms of individuals in terms of problems? In terms of problems, well, we we do see a lot of people um, come through clinics, obviously that. Um, haven't that, that they may have had a sporting injury um, sometimes, and they lead, that leads into addiction because they're um, prescribed medication. But then there's, there's the other people who um, who simply use um, drugs and alcohol all the way through their professional career, not as a way of um, boosting their performance, but a way of um, keeping the excitement going and, and trying to beat those lulls in competition, or um, simply just um, bonding with with other either group members of, of a um, individual sport or, or team members or mm. um, other staff in the, in the sporting arena. Mm. Well, we certainly see in, in many sports a great association with alcohol, don't we? You know, big drinking after after win, big party mentality, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we still see, um, to this day, the, the Mad Mondays um, advertised on, um, shown on, on um, news reports after teams finish their... Um, their seasons, and um, that's that's well and truly accessible for everyone to see. And mm. like you say, there is a very big, um, very big association between sports and, um, I suppose, the fun and excitement of, of alcohol use or, or drug use. Even mm. sometimes, I wonder if the sports themselves care much about this aspect of their their players. They've got enough to deal with with performance enhancing drugs, with the sort of drugs that are illegal in terms of the sport. I wonder if they care much about this aspect of of their players' behaviour. Yeah, I, I think they definitely would, and, and if they don't, they, they um, very much should. Because the problem with um, with addictive substances and alcohol is that they can lead to a, a decline in sporting performance. Absolutely, um, because of the effects that they have on the on the body. Um, I think education is key from a sport and club level um, to make sure that that these players and, and um, athletes know um, what they're in for um, if they do start to use uh, illicit drugs or alcohol to an excessive extent. Mm. Now, you, you run a, work at a clinic dealing with, with, uh, with, with alcohol re- rehabilitation and the like? Yes, I do. Yep. Yeah. And so what sort of things do you see coming through there? Is this what, like, what I'm wondering is, have you actually seen sort of like a lot of sportsmen coming through or is it just something you've started to, to think about? Why have you decided to look at this area? I mean, we could look at lawyers in the same way, couldn't we? Yeah, absolutely, and that's a, that's a very good point. Um, high stress um, with the, what we see in the clinics, um, especially for the I suppose the um, what we call functioning addicts, is that the people who we see are very high, uh, they're in high stress environments. The unfortunate thing about that is that sometimes um, they perform very very well at their chosen profession, whether they're a lawyer, whether they're um, a dentist, whether they're a housewife or an athlete. Um, they perform very. They continue to perform very well while everything else may fall apart, and that tends to mask mm. um, exactly what is going on in their life. Mm. Well, that's what I suppose what I'm wondering whether there's any particular connection between sport, or it's, or it's there's another sort of connection between the kind of person who's who's disposed to addiction in drugs and alcohol. Yeah, we couldn't say definitively that that it is sports people, but but what we know is that. Um, we do see definitely sports people coming through these clinics, um, through private clinics um, for treatment. And like I said, we can't definitively say that um, it's absolute that they're seeking um, enjoyment or, or um, that reward circuitry um, stimulation. We can't say that that's a definitive. Uh, but what we can say from from the stories that we've seen on the news of, of several athletes who have recently come out about their addictions, um, that it is there. It's, it's definitely there. Um, and anecdotally speaking, um, that excitement um, and that need to continually um, strive to be the best um, can lead people to um, illicit drug use. Mm. Cameron Brown, uh, thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. Good to get some uh, information there. And uh, thanks for sharing your expertise. That's a psychologist, Cameron Brown, uh, who's from a uh, clinic called The Cabin and uh, has also been addressing the Swinburne University Sport and Recreation Conference was held in, uh, held in Melbourne today.